Hey y'all, thought I'd show you what I've been working on recently, which is managing and installing NixOS using NixOS Anywhere and Terraform. So, Vim Joyer made a video on NixOS Anywhere a couple weeks ago, and uh, one of the cool features that they have is a Terraform module. So I'll kind of go over how it works here and what to do. So we have a couple modules. We have the all-in-one, the install, the rebuild, and the build. The install, as soon as Terraform starts to manage a resource, it will go ahead and... Uh, completely wipe it and reinstall it um, using Disco and NixOS Anywhere and everything. NixOS Rebuild will go ahead and do updates using just the NixOS Rebuild setup. So if you just wanted to update your systems using Terraform and manually install them, that's a that's a good approach. Because sometimes NixOS Anywhere with Terraform can kind of be a little finicky. So uh, NixBuild is their helper function to actually build the resource, um, like the system closure. The all-in-one is just those combined. So let me show you how that works. So uh, they just kind of go over a little bit about how it works here and a basic kind of setup that will work for pretty much anyone except these parts. Usually you don't need those. Um, but some scripts. They got the how the NixOS wiki is set up on Hetzner Cloud using Terraform. And uh, they kind of go over just how you should do some stuff. Uh, Get ops sort of. And uh, just the modules they provide here, as well as the uh, the settings that you can configure. Let me show you how I have it set up. First of all, the module actually requires a custom uh, version of Terraform that you set up here with plugins. So because Nix is immutable, you actually need to provide the plugins themselves. And I also needed JQ uh, for some reason, I believe. So as you can see with this Terraform init commit. So... Uh, yeah, so you just say Terraform with plugins in your shell, and then in this case you have, you, I do p.null because otherwise it gets interpreted as a raw object uh, from Nix. So, yeah, we say packages null, so that's the null provider, and this is the external provider. So that's all you really need um, just to get started for just completely raw networking, no cloud provisioning like Hetzner or Vulture or uh, AWS, nothing like that, or any VPS like Linode. Um, those are all, this is just a complete default. You would need to provide those providers um, plugins in there, which you can use the NixOS search to find. Um, so next, I'm going to go over my actual Terraform file. So I just have this directory here, deployments NixOS, and these are a bunch of state files and stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter too much. What really matters is the main.tf. So this is the only file I have here for this deployment. And in this case, we have these local variables, and locals are just... Yeah, they're just variables just for this file rather than variables across files and, and modules. So we have two variables here. We have host files and hosts. So this will return a bunch of JSON files, which I'll show you their contents. And hosts will take each one of the JSON files in the directory and we'll go ahead and decode the JSON into variables. So if we go here, the path goes up two directories into systems and then searches down recursively a couple directories until it finds a host. So uh, it searches down two exactly. So it finds this file here, and we go ahead and uh, um, use this. So IPv4 is the address we're going to override. Um, this can be public or private. It doesn't really matter as long as it's accessible by you and you have SSH keys to access it. And the host name is what we use to graft into the actual build attribute. So if we go back into main.tf um, here, we go ahead and do this module and I'll kind of explain how it works. So in Terraform, there is a for each block and this for each block goes ahead and will do the same action on each host that is defined by each file. So I can have a hundred of these files and they will, it will run one deploy for each one in parallel. So that's how that works. And then we get the source, which this is the actual, what the module like is built upon. So in this case, we get the repo. And then this double slash says end of URL into the file system of the repo cloned. And then this says, hey, slash Terraform slash all in one. Um, the system and the partitioner adder, these are uh, the build. So this system adder is the actual implicit build that happens when you do NixOS rebuild switch with a flake. Uh, it just uses your host name uh, environment variable and graphs it into this, this configuration's build top level. And in this case, when you do a for each block, you can access the values and the keys, which the key is the current uh, host file path that we're accessing. And the values is the decoded version of that. So this each here is 
the value in the host name. So we go ahead and grab that host name from that JSON and we say build that NixOS configurations uh, top level. And then the partitioner is just saying, hey, do that for the disco script so it knows what script to run to format the system. Next, we do target host, which this is just what system to run on. An instance ID we set to the same. So if we change the IP address, it'll go ahead and overwrite the system and completely just install to a new system the same host name. So it just lets uh, Terraform know that we changed uh, the IP address that we want to deploy to. So it'll completely recreate everything. And then finally, we actually get the key which in this case is the path from the main.tf uh, relative all the way back to the host.tf. We cut off the host.tf, so that leaves us with systems slash, you know, dot dot slash, um, dot dot slash systems slash this slash equinox slash host.tf. We get rid of host.tf and we append hardware config, and that is the path that ends up being passed to um, to this. And that says we can overwrite the generate config path here. So when we install the system, the system we're installing, its hardware config will get overridden. So you don't need to do any manual cloning of that or don't worry about that. You can also do it with NixOS Factor, but I'm not using that right now. So that's a basic summary of how it works. Let me show you how we actually deploy. So you go ahead and you say Terraform apply, and here it is running. I only have one file. That's why the git is there, because I didn't want to override a second system that I don't want to override. So we have, there's the relative path running module on this. It uses Nix build to build the system closure as well as the um, the setup. So it'll, it'll create two resources when you first create it. It will create a NixOS remote resource, which this is saying, do the install. As you can see, the instance ID is the, uh, is the IP address. So we're going to use no resource to create a remote resource that will go ahead and destroy and install using NixOS Anywhere. And it will create a second resource called NixOS Rebuild. And this resource has the store path of the system closure. But like I said, when we go ahead and cover the store path, um, if this changes, which when you run Terraform Apply, it'll do a rebuild, which can take between 20 and 40 seconds on average for me. Um, it will go ahead and say, hey, this store path is tainted, so it will destroy and recreate the rebuild. Now, if you destroy the remote and you recreate it, that'll reinstall. But if you destroy the rebuild, it'll actually just update. So that's what it does. It says it's tainted and must be replaced, and it will replace it with a brand new rebuild with a new store path, so it'll reinstall or it'll, it'll, it'll update. So if we say yes here, it's going to go ahead and it's going to SSH onto the local network system. And it's then going to kexec the image. So it's downloading the kexec right now. And once it gets copied over, that's going to reboot the system into the installer. So it's as if you plugged in a USB for a uh, just a regular install. So here it is doing a kexec. It waits about six seconds, and it will reboot. So it also copy special keys specifically for this install to that system and it's now going to wait and it's going to start building the system as soon as it's reachable again okay so my router's been acting a little bit weird recently so um yeah it did not hand out the same ip address that it had before that i was expecting so i went ahead and changed the ip address in the host.tf uh, json file and as you can see it triggered the remote to be replaced because it started the creation. But in this case, it's going to do this destroy and then create replacement. And it still hasn't done the rebuild because that is the actual bootstrap after the install. So it needs to create it. So we say yes. And this is going to finish it. And in this case, it's on the remote system. And now what it's going to do is it's going to start copying all the paths. Now it's formatting all the drives using the disco configuration, which in this case is an impermanent setup with uh, ButterFS. And it went ahead and built the system closure. And because I changed, I set it up so it automatically forces the IP address, it's now going to just set it uh, to that IP address. So I'll be back when this is done copying all this because this takes quite a minute. But uh, yeah, it'll do it all in parallel if you have multiple systems at the same time. It'll just start new threads and do multiple installs concurrently. So it should take roughly the same time for the same number of machines as long as you ha it's around 10 machines is is what Terraform tries to do at a time. But you can override this to be as many as you want.
So I'll be right back. Okay, so now that it's finished copying all of that, um, it goes ahead and runs an actual deployment uh, on the remote. So in this case here, it copied uh, all this extra stuff it needed, and it said installation finished, as you can see here. So now it went ahead and it added the IP address to the system. And now that it rebooted again and it's fully installed, it's now performing the NixOS rebuild. So in this case, it's executing the with all these flags and setup. It's just doing the copy and it's copying the closure and then executing that closure there, which when NixOS rebuild actually runs, it just generates a bash script that goes ahead and does all the changes. So now it ran it, and in this case it failed because I actually did not copy my SOPS keys. However, it doesn't really matter because it's still set up and it still is finished deploying. It just failed that. So uh, if I copy my keys, I can reapply to show you what an update looks like, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so my router closed off access, but uh, the install itself did function, and it is a system running on, on my network. It's just uh, acting a little weird. But... If I, if I were to go ahead and just copy the keys over to the system and I ran Terraform Apply, it would go ahead and build the system and uh, update. So yeah, I hope that was helpful and I hope that you start using Terraform. Uh, it's, it's a good way to deploy stuff and if you, let's say in the future, had a Kubernetes cluster that you were going to add using K3S or Proxmox, for an example, which I do want to make some videos kind of covering how those work. Uh, you can use Terraform to set up Proxmox automatically um, on the system. So you can use NixOS to install Proxmox and generate a, a template VM, and then use Terraform to copy that VM and have uh, just infrastructure as code set up. And for Kubernetes, you can set up the Kubernetes cluster on NixOS systems. And then you can use Terraform to uh, bootstrap Argo CD for GitOps. So yeah, I hope that helped and I hope you have a great day.